we're going to practice some math that you might see on a plumber pipe fitter uh, practice exam or one of the uh, local exams. Um, all local exams are different, so make sure that you, you know, ask for a study guide. Uh, if you want to see anything different that you don't see in this video, try one of the other videos. Or, you know, if you send me some math, I'll try to make a video out of it. If you uh, want me to share certain things with you, I will definitely do it. In this video, we're going to talk about fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. To add fractions or subtract fractions, you must have common denominator on the fractional piece. So when we see this big list of things that um, are fractional and we want to add them, we have to get a common denominator. So I am going to rewrite each one of these to look a little different than what you see here. I think it just makes a little more sense. If you see it the way I'm going to write it now, I don't write a slash. I make like a, a distinct top and bottom. If we look at all the numbers here for eight, sixteen, two, and eight, we're looking for a number that they all can go into. They are all um, divisible into the number sixteen. Now, if you think thirty-two, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I try to find the littlest number that they can all divide into, which is sixteen. So let's put sixteens down here. So that's the denominator we're seeking. Now, to change our first fraction here into 16s, 4 goes into 16 4 times. So I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 4. So that's 12. To make the second fraction into 16, 8 goes into 16 2 times. I've got to multiply top and bottom by 2. So that's 2 sixteenths. Uh, that 7 sixteenths is exactly what we wanted. Um, we're going to have to multiply this fraction by 8 on top and bottom to make that 16. So that's 8 sixteenths. We're going to multiply here by 2 on top and bottom, so that's 2 sixteenths. Now, the way you add or subtract um, fractions is we keep the bottom, and we either add or subtract it, depending on what you're doing, the tops. So we know the answer is going to be sixteenths, definitely sixteenths. Now, if you add, you're only adding up the tops, and if we go down the list, 12 plus 2 is 14, plus 7 is 21, plus 8 is 29, plus 10 is 31, okay? So that's how you initially uh, add fractions. You just get a common denominator, and then you add up the tops. Okay, keep that bottom. Now these front numbers, we're just going to add them. Um, if we add 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5, if we add up that, um, that is 20, I believe. Let's do it again. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yep. Yeah. So we would bring down the 0, and that 2 would carry over with the 1, and so that we'd get 30. Now, that's not the way you want to leave a uh, mixed number like that. Uh, we should never have a, this part to be larger than our bottom. Well, 16 goes into uh, 31 one time with uh, 15 remaining. So we almost had two, but not quite. So the one you're going to add over with the whole number, because I have one whole number and 15 remaining. So your final answer would be 31 and 15 sixteenths. Now then you should always check the 15 sixteenths. Is there a way that you can reduce that? Well, the only uh, thing that goes into 16 are multiples of 2, like numbers 2, 4, 8, 16. The twos don't go into 15, so it is reduced as far as you can go. You're done, okay? Now let's talk about subtracting. Subtraction requires the same sort of thinking. I'm going to write this over here. Okay? And we need a common denominator between 8 and 4 is 8. So I'm going to change these each into 8s. Now how would we do that? Well, 4 goes into 8 two times. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2, and that's 6 eighths, and then we have 7 eighths. Now, in order for us to subtract, we must have the right amount of eighths. We can't take 7 eighths from 6 eighths. So here's what you do, and this works every time. Okay, Take 1 off of your number, so let make that a 7, just like when you're borrowing in decimal values. But all you're going to do is you're going to add 8 to that. So if your denominator is 8, add 8. If your denominator is 2, add 2. If your denominator is 7, add 7. 
And so we get 7 and 14 eighths minus 5 and 7 eighths. Now we still are going to have eighths in our denominator. We're now going to do it very similar to the addition above. 7 minus 5 is 2. 14 minus 7 is 7. And always check, can I reduce anything? Is there any way to make my fraction nicer? You cannot. Your answer is 2 and 7 eighths. Now, that's how you do addition and subtraction. You must have a common denominator. You keep that denominator, add or subtract the tops. Whole numbers just come along for the bride. But let's talk about multiplication and division. Multiplication and division is a little different. Um, it's, we don't have to have common denominators. Uh, we do have to have each piece to be a fraction. It can't be a mixed number, so we do have to fix that. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, 4 and 2 thirds times 5 and 3 sevenths times 3 fifths. And you should not write them with the slash. It, it's not helpful in any sort of way. Um, uh, what we do want to happen here is we want to multiply uh, the whole number part in the denominator. So multiply and then add. So I'll make yourself a little. So we're going to multiply. We're going to get 12 and then we're going to add multiply, get 35, and then we're going to add, okay? So the fractions I'm really going to uh, do are 2 plus 12 is 14 thirds, 3 plus 35 is 38 sevenths, and then 3 fifths is perfectly fine the way that it goes. Okay. Now, in order to multiply fractions, we're going to multiply the tops with the tops and the bottoms with the bottom. But if you don't have a calculator, one great thing you can do is if there is a factor on top that can divide off, that is also a factor in the de uh, denominator, the bottom, that can divide off, you're allowed to divide it. What do I mean by that? Well, both the top and bottom are divisible by 3. Technically, they turned into 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Both 14 and 7 are divisible by 7. So if we divide both of those by 7, we get 1 and 2. So if you're doing this by hand, reduce tops with bottoms if you can. And then we're still then, whatever's remaining, we're going to multiply tops with tops and bottoms with bottoms. So 2 times 38 times 1 um, is uh, 76. 1 times 1 times 5 is 5. Now that is correct. So you're welcome to keep it like that. That is a correct answer. But since they started with mixed numbers, I think we should put it back in mixed number form. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's technically a division. How many times does 5 go into 76 without going over? That's going to be our whole number, okay? So 5 goes into 7 one time. 5 goes into 26 five times. Our one remainder is going to go back over the 5. So what do I mean by that? Okay, it went into it 15 times. We have one remainder, that's our numerator, over our 5 denominator. Okay? Now, keeping that in mind, let's talk about how we do the bottom number here. 5 and 3 fourths divided by 2 and 1 half. 5 and 3 fourths, um, I'm going to write it like this. 5 and 3 fourths divided by 2 and 1 half, must be a mixed number, or I mean an improper fraction, I'm sorry, and not a mixed number as we proceed to the next step. Now, remember what I did before. I multiply, get 20, I add that on to the 3. So I'm going to get 23 over 4. Multiply, 2 by 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Okay. Now, here's the trick. There's a little saying that... Uh, I learned back when I was a girl, a little girl, and I still remember it to this day. Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. I don't know why it works, but it works. So keep the first number, change the symbol to multiplication, and flip over the last fraction. So keep, change the sign, flip. Keep, change, flip. And now it becomes a problem like the one we saw earlier. It's a multiplication. If anything on top has a common factor that's divisible with anything on the bottom, we can reduce it first. So I notice that our 2 and 4 are both divisible by 2. So if I divide them by 2, I get 1 and 2. 
And now we're going to multiply tops with tops and bottoms with bottoms. So we get 23 over 10. And you can always check, is there anything else I can divide out, you know, at this point? And there isn't. Um, but we should put it back into mix number four. 10 goes into 23 two times with three remaining. That's easier to do in your head than the one earlier. Um, uh, and you could check your work. Two times 10 is 20 plus three should be 23, which it is. So that is a little bit about fractions. I hope that helps you understand those a little better. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.